What's up everyone? We're here to watch another video by Bora City Magazine. Last time I watched one, a lot of people enjoyed it and told me to watch another video by this channel, which I get. I really enjoyed the last one I watched and seeing the videos that they've made, the topics seem interesting, especially the one that we're gonna watch today. The next BTS, why they fail every time. Very, very interesting topic right there because, well, we all know BTS is very unique. What they've done has never been done before. Their achievements in the K-pop industry are just crazy. And it would just be really hard to match BTS because I feel like a long time ago, K-pop used to be a very niche interest over here. In the West, if you weren't into K-pop, you never really heard about it. But nowadays, it seems like everyone knows about K-pop. Everybody knows about their music. Everyone knows about BTS because BTS helped make K-pop more mainstream. So no group is gonna be able to replicate that because, well, it's already mainstream. Like, what next? At this point, it's just impossible to be the next BTS because what they did and what they've done is so one of a kind and was perfect for the moment when it happened. So the next huge group is also gonna have to innovate, do something. What could that be? Who knows? But yeah, anyways, let's start watching this video. In 2018, BTS were already well established as the biggest group in the world. Two years after their American TV debut had already passed, and yeah, their the success only kept growing. The name insane. BTS was associated with some of the biggest names in the music industry. This helped keep... Yeah, like at this point, BTS is already up there and treated like like all the other artists, you know, they, they are big and everyone knows it. BTS was associated with some of the biggest names in the music industry. This helped K-pop grow as a whole, but BTS were the only ones in the spotlight in the Western music industry. The K-pop industry noticed this. So SM, one of the biggest entertainment Ooh. agencies in South Korea, had the idea to create a super group formed of the seven most popular members of some of the most popular K-pop groups and promoted them as oh. the Avengers <laughs> of K-pop. This way, there's a the Avengers of K-pop. But you know that that's an interesting concept. Actually, get a whole bunch of popular people from K-pop groups and put them together. You know that that seems like a recipe for success. But I mean, not always, because a big part about K-pop groups and why people love them is the chemistry. So just gathering a whole bunch of like different people who who don't really know much about each other. Yeah, I can see why maybe it didn't work out. Most popular K-pop groups and promoted them as the Avengers of K-pop. This way, their success was supposed to be guaranteed and their chances of becoming the next BTS were bigger than the chances of the hundreds of other K-pop groups That's also why they trying to level with the this? success of BTS. This supergroup did everything they could. Their label SM Entertainment partnered with the US label Capitol Records. Their debut stage was in Hollywood. Their TV debut Hollywood? was on the Ellen DeGeneres show. They also performed on Jimmy Kimmel. Their premiere event was in Los Angeles and had American press. Their debut album oh. had eight different versions. One I see. So yeah, they saw, wow, BTS is doing great in America. Let's try to do the same. Regular version and one individual edition for each of the seven members. And they started an American tour right away. All of this promotion helped them get a number one on the Billboard 200 albums charts, Ooh. making them the hey. second Korean act to top the chart. That's huge. after BTS. This made Los Angeles Times and entertainment companies predict that this group was going to be the next BTS. Well, they had a good but start. There was something weird. Outside of the K-pop sphere, no one really knew about them. They were everywhere and their album was Ooh. number one. But the songs of the album were nowhere to be found on song charts like the Billboard Hot 100. Or yeah, I guess that's true, right? Because BTS themselves were the ones that became mainstream. So nowadays, everyone knows BTS. But all the specific people from groups, a lot of people don't know. Unless you're like a fan of K-pop and are really into them. So just gathering a whole bunch of big artists from Korea and bringing them to America... Yeah, now that I think about it, it may not be a good idea since most people over here wouldn't know them. 
even in the top 20 of the bubbling under Hot 100. And right after their album debuted at number one, it disappeared from the top 10. Their second album had a similar story. The Avengers of K-pop performed in American TV shows and even partnered with Marvel for limited edition merchandise. But their they album debuted at number two with none of its songs charting on the Hot 100. This was only one of the multiple failed next BTS attempts, whether they are Korean girl groups or Korean boy groups. Year after year, Korean entertainment agencies and American music labels have been trying to replicate BTS's success. You guys are... I mean, how did BTS become so mainstream? Like, why is it, why is it that everyone knows them? <laughs> are the biggest boy band yeah. in the world it's pretty crazy in achievement the it's not a secret that the k-pop industry has been studying bts's popularity for years an industry official said right now the i don't even think there's a an answer as to how they got so popular like you can't really pinpoint something that they did it just happened so that's why people can't replicate been it. been studying BTS's popularity for years. An industry official said, Right now, the biggest concern in the K-pop industry is who will make the next BTS. So all attention is focused on biggest the performance concern. of the United States. The entertainment oh. agency's main strategy to set the narrative that their group is the actual next BTS is to hyper-focus on getting one or two achievements that BTS previously had. But since this is almost impossible, they go out of their way to find strategies in which they can be named together, hoping that people won't bother to know the context. One example is album sales. BTS are the second group only after the Beatles to get three number one albums in less than a year. Oh, this phrase shit. was everywhere. And they just became the first group since the Beatles to earn three number one albums in less than a year. This is a very hard really? record for K-pop or for any artist to achieve, but getting at least one number one album may be enough to be named in the same conversation as BTS. So oh, although these I groups see. cannot so, so some K-pop group comes out with a number one album and then they start saying, oh, are they the next BTS? They have an organic number one album because of lack of demand in the US, they still can sell multiple versions of the same album with different pictures that fans can collect at a very small price. This will lead to a lot oh, of album sales, but not song sales or streams. So the ah. normal thing for a real number they got their tactics, huh? They, they know how to do, do this. One album is to have at least one top 10 song or multiple songs on the Billboard Hot 100. Because if an album is popular, then at least one song of the album has to be popular. This doesn't True. happen with K-pop albums because they are not actually big in the US. But that doesn't matter. These groups technically have a number one or a number two album. So entertainment agencies will use this to pretend like they will be the next BTS because is... they have the same achievement. Another example. That's Pretty BTS are one scummy. of the few artists who can sell out stadium tours these days. This is something extremely hard even for the biggest western artists you can imagine. Bro, I mean their Sophie Stadium concert tickets like what the hell? Everything sells out in like 10 minutes. <laughs> this is something extremely hard even for the biggest western artists you can imagine. So K-pop's strategy to pretend like they also have a stadium tour is to have at least one concert in places like the Bank of California Stadium, which doesn't actually have a stadium capacity. It has an arena capacity of only 20,000 people. Mm, it's quite a lot of people. It's just part of the arena venue's name. An actual stadium tour I wonder what it's like buying concert tickets for other groups. I haven't uh, seen what that's like. Because I know with BTS, it's extremely hard. And they sell out real quickly. But I wonder what it's like for the rest. Like BTS's stores, it's composed of multiple concerts in stadiums with 40,000 to 80,000 seats in each concert. So Hold up. Stadiums with revenue? What? We, we know the revenue that they made? 33 million? Oh! 32 million? Holy shit, 35? God damn, that's how they're always walking around with like a thousand dollar shirt. With 40,000 to 80,000 seats in each concert. So thanks to Media Play, other K-pop groups can be named as the next BTS because they are supposedly having stadium tours when they are actually performing in arenas, theaters, and one arena venue that has yeah, a stadium in not its the name. Same. These type of strategies are very common. Whenever BTS does something, the K-pop industry focuses on that something. This is why K-pop groups but what is the point of doing all of that? Just so that they can put the next BTS in like their news articles? Is that it? <laughs> started submitting their work to the Grammys only after BTS started getting nominations to the Grammys. And Ooh. not only that, to the Grammys... Oh, so people have to submit their work to the Grammys? 
and BTS did that. Only after BTS started getting nominations to the Grammy. Oh, because they got nominated. And not only that, but if BTS is nominated to Best Pop Duo Group Performance, the media's attention is on Best Pop Duo Group Performance. So K-pop groups submit their songs for this category. Oh One of my the gosh. BTS They're trying to copy everything. Best Music Video. This is a new achievement for them because they've never been nominated for this category. So I can assure you that next year, K-pop groups will start submitting their music videos for this category. And the media will drop predictions saying that they will also be nominated because the industry only goes after what BTS already has. So they really just try to copy everything. UK pop. All of these were the next BTS K-pop attempts. But what about Western attempts? In a Ooh. video I made some time ago, I went through the multiple attempts of creating the next big boy band after One Direction. And these attempts came around 2016 and 2017. Yeah, I mean... I imagine it also happened with One Direction, right? BTS were rising to popularity in the West and were named the biggest group in the world. However, I don't think these new boy bands were trying to be the next BTS because BTS were fairly new and BTS were seen as a fluke or a weird so, phenomenon that will last probably one or two years. But so they were trying to copy what? One Direction? <laughs> year after year passed by and the multiple new Western boy bands, which were backed by the biggest Western music labels, kept failing trying to surpass BTS. And not even the yeah, biggest... Yeah, you know, I guess in the West, boy bands, they kind of feel like they've been dying out, right? <laughs> uh, I can't remember like too many recent boy bands that were real popular, you know, outside of... K-pop. Western music labels kept failing trying to surpass BTS. And not even the biggest comebacks of popular old boy bands could compete against BTS. So in 2019, Simon <laughs> Cowell, the creator Yo. of boy bands, could compete against BTS. So Yo, I used to like, I used to rock out to Big Time Rush back in the day. Those guys are awesome. <laughs> in 2019, I love Simon Big Time Cowell, Rush. the creator of One Direction, had the amazing idea of creating a new British group that would become bigger than BTS. And said that really? Simon Cowell? K pop group will destroy the K pop group, which is ruling the world. In the work, because I the biggest boy group I've never world, even heard of this or the biggest girl group in the world. We've done it before, we're going to do it again. Right now, K pop, you could argue, is ruling the world. Now, it's time for you, K pop. So, I mean, his hey. singing show, The X Factor, is going to try. A I respect it. The X Factor, the band dedicated to group together a boy band and a girl band. Oh. These two groups would then compete against each other, and the winner would get a record deal with Simon Cowell's label Psycho Music, release their debut album, and become the biggest group in the world. In the okay, end, I don't know about Simon that. created ended up losing the show, not signing to Psycho Music, and breaking Ooh. up a few months after their creation. The girl group yeah. did get a record deal with Psycho Music. I mean, it reminds me of what uh, they mentioned in the last video I watched in this channel, how BTS, they had to like start from the ground up and have been living together for like uh, a long time when they started whereas here you're just getting a whole bunch of different people so uh, the chemistry it just might not be there breaking up a few months after their creation the girl group did get a record deal with psycho music but they never released a debut album and one of the six members left the group to pursue a solo career in 2022 well, they long. left psycho music signed to warner records and another member left the group another attempt of creating the next bts failed once again the american music award goes to okay, billboard awards the latest attempt of finding the next BTS joined the forces of the K-pop industry and the biggest representative of the Western music industry, Billboard. The K-Billboard Awards was an event Ooh. organized by the K-Culture Festival and Billboard, which attempted to highlight the biggest achievements of K-pop artists based on the Billboard charts. The organizer said, this is part of our mission to find the next BTS. Wait, they said that? We will strictly that? adhere to Billboard's point system. But do you know what happens when you adhere to Billboard's point system bts wins <laughs> so they also named the second place as the winners continuing their oh. strategy <laughs> to associate k-pop groups with bts even when the gap between first so even even then you know bts were out here uh winning because yeah even the normal billboards bts are, are winning then 
In this, it's going to be the same story. In their strategy to associate K-pop groups with BTS, even when the gap between first and second place is abysmal. There's just so many legends to walk through this door. Why they always fail? Are they just trying to copy them? When they're supposed to be doing something new. SM's founder, Lee Sung Man, was the one with the idea of creating the Avengers of K-pop, and this was one of his multiple attempts of creating the next BTS. But since he fails every time, at some point, the media started naming him as the mastermind behind BTS, where he literally had zero relation to the group. The mastermind? Why? Groups that try to directly compete against BTS. But he is not the only one. The three biggest K-pop to directly compete. There would be no BTS without Lee Su Man. What? against BTS, but he is not the only one. The three biggest K-pop labels are pushing the idea that their groups are actually the next BTS. SM had the Avengers of K-pop, but since they are on a hiatus, he is now pushing a four-member girl group to become the future of K-pop. YG is using media play and allegedly buying awards in small American Ooh. award shows to pretend like his biggest girl group is on the same level as BTS. And most wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? YG is using media play buying awards. Damn, that is pretty scummy if it's true. But hey, Blackpink, I will say, they are probably the, the next biggest popular group. And allegedly so buying awards in a small American award they're shows still really to pretend popular. like his biggest girl group is on the same level as BTS. And most recently, JYP had Korean media suddenly releasing multiple articles naming his group as the next BTS. Oh I don't think gosh. this is a coincidence. This all seems like premeditated media play. But how is it that they keep failing, even with all the media play they can get? I found some common factors in their failed attempts. Ooh. First is lack of originality. Of if course, BTS releases that's... An Album. That's the first thing I thought of, right? They, they, they need to be more original, try new stuff. Trilogy about self-love and acceptance, K-pop starts singing about self-love and acceptance. Wait, really? <laughs> I love myself. Love yourself. Just be yourself. Is that actually because BTS started doing that? I mean, I feel like love yourself is a common message. Myself. If BTS releases a song like Fake Love, K pop groups immediately release songs with a dark aesthetic. What? BTS is okay, how true is this? Because uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, like K pop groups, so many. So, I, you know, I would believe if it would just be coincidence, right? If BTS does something and then some groups do something similar coincidentally. But if a whole bunch start doing it, well then yeah, I guess you could say that they're just trying to copy them. Love, K-pop groups immediately release songs with a dark aesthetic. BTS stops the dark aesthetic and releases Boy With Love. K-pop groups release songs with a pink aesthetic. BTS releases a song titled Life Goes On. K-pop releases Life Is Still Going On. BTS Wait releases a minute. title Life Goes On. Life Is releases Still Going Life On. Alright, I'll, I'll have to do some like research here. It's still going on. BTS releases Smooth Like Butter, K pop releases Sweet Like Mango. And these are just trivial examples that don't. Okay, now those examples, yeah, like. <laughs> Butter. Sweet like mango, smooth like butter. K pop releases butter. sweet like mango. And these are just trivial examples that don't really matter much. The key here is lack of originality. K pop does the same thing over and over again. And that is not necessarily a bad thing for a K pop audience. But if you keep trying to make this work in a Western audience, you will keep failing. Number two is trying to be unique in the wrong aspect. When the next BTS wrong attempts aspect. actually try to be original, they sometimes try to be original original in everything but the music. An example of this is SM's attempt of creating a metaverse group with four members who are real people and four members who are their virtual alter what? egos. So producers are not trying to find unique interesting artists with new, rare or just not so common musical elements. They are trying to create groups that are different in aspects that music fans don't care about. I personally oh. think that the Avengers of K-pop idea was not the worst idea yeah. ever but they focus 
too much on everything except for the music. SM tried So like all the promotion, the media, the awards, stuff like that. To sell the idea that this group's unique aspect was that unlike BTS and the others, the members had a manly man aesthetic. But who cares if they look like masculine men with black clothes who are called the Avengers when their music is this. You know how we get down, dropping, how we get down, dropping. We keep it jumping and popping here all night. By the way, if you like this song, it's completely fine. I'm just saying yeah, that I, I think <laughs> we can all understand why it didn't succeed in America. So once they failed, they left the Millie Man aesthetic and went back to the first mistake. Right after BTS released their first English single, Dynamite, and sang about shining through the city and oh, being that, like that, diamonds, they switched this it up. changed Diamond for gold and sang in English about shining bright like gold. And don't get me wrong, there is nothing wrong with following music trends. But if that's all you do, you won't stand out especially when you're trying so hard to create the next bts number yeah. three kind of remind me of like when you're doing a uh, trading you know trading money with stocks or anything you make the most money when you're at the beginning of a trend so like if you're there when the trend starts it'll go well for you but if you join when the trend is like already on its way then it's it's not as good <laughs> the the key is being there when the trend starts it is the lack of raw talent pretty people singing with loud pre-recorded vocals or playback are almost a rule in k-pop but that won't work if you want to be the next bts and you gotta have skill in america we holla wait a minute is that supposed to be her line in the song K-pop is bright. Wow. That, um, I feel like they need a little bit more passion. <laughs> K-pop is prioritizing looks way more than it should be. YG admitted that his biggest girl group was just a prettier version of a previous girl group. He said, Dang. if you ask me to distinguish my new group from my last group, I want to say I did not try to make them different. If you ask me what differentiates them from other girl groups, I will say I did not form them with that in mind. I tried to make a girl group like I did with my previous girl group, but this time I wanted the girls to look pretty too. I won't pretend like looks don't matter in the western music industry because they do they, but yeah they looks do and a nice aesthetic is not enough That's korean true. labels need to start prioritizing at least a little of talent and passion for music finally i think the next bts attempts keep failing because music labels are obsessed with control and being the main character i think Ooh. they want to control all of their group's steps because the ceos want to be recognized for finding and paying the best songwriters in the industry instead of encouraging their interpreters to be artists i, I think see so that can be why another reason why they fail a lot because they need originality but if they're just being controlled by the company then it's gonna be hard this is why JYP had articles putting his picture on his group's articles so he can be called the mastermind behind the next BTS. This and is also that why, why, that's why it was, was ruined. was saying that he was the one with the idea of creating the Avengers of K-pop and the Metaverse group. I want to take the time to acknowledge a very special guest we have in the building. We have producer Mr. Superman. Oh. That's not what BTS's label That man did. was trying to be a celebrity too. <laughs> That's not what Namjoon did as the leader of BTS. They let the group shine as a group. With that said, I don't think it's necessarily bad that the producers behind a group explain the process of creating a group. But the focus should be on the group and their music, not on the CEOs. Number Definitely. 5 is not accepting that BTS are way too out of their league. This person tweeted, It all boils down to these labels refusing to accept that BTS is not just a K-pop group anymore. They are talked about in actual pop conversations they have solidified a legacy they are literally yeah, they're, worldwide a-listers global artists they already like came out of the k-pop bubble big labels make every move based off the fact that well they are a k-pop group so the world must all love and want more k-pop and that's just not how it works that's why they keep failing 
my tutorial. Wait, they're gonna come up with their own? So I guess tutorial? if you as a producer or record label really, really, really want to create or be the mastermind behind the next BTS in terms of popularity, you need to look for very unique artists that are not necessarily going to be part of a group like BTS. I may be saying be complete different. nonsense now because I'm not a record producer or anything like that, but the actual record producers and analysts have been studying BTS closely for years and they keep failing. So this is just what a simple music fan like me would do. Number one, if you want to create the next big artist in America, you need to first focus on the music. Looks are Yeah, right. Like people actually need to like the music. They're a music group after all. <laughs> Great, but every single K-pop group has good looks. You need to step up your music game. You cannot debut in America with a song about being the best at jumping. You have to tell me what jumping means. Jumping? Yes. And puppy. We jumping! Jumping, of course. Why did I ask? <laughs> Number two, and this also applies to Western attempts. Don't be mediocre and lazy. The reason why every single attempt of the next big boy band failed in 2016 and 2017, That's and lazy. also the reason why the comeback of all boy bands failed too, was because they were extremely mediocre when compared to BTS. This is the main reason why it's highly unlikely to find the next BTS, because BTS did not only set the bar extremely high for k-pop but also for the western music industry so stop comparing yourself to bts because that is a game that you are going to lose number three yeah another good point they should just do their own thing all right if they do good enough they will be successful instead of just trying to to do it because they want to be popular because they want to be at the top and this is for music labels be patient the beatles michael jackson queen and bts they not become the one. biggest artists in the world with their first release Took don't time. try to force or fake a big debut when it really isn't a big debut and more importantly don't be like simon cowell or sm and abandon your group when the media play didn't work small debuts are not necessarily that's a real good point be patient like the next big group the next group that like becomes real popular, it's not gonna happen overnight. They're gonna probably work their way up. M and abandon your group when the media play didn't work. Small debuts are not necessarily a bad thing. The ones trying to create the next BTS are some of the biggest labels. So instead of spending all this money in fake achievements and media play, try to spend this money in keeping your group alive as long as you can, so they can musically and artistically grow. Number four, be different. If you really want to have a big debut like Olivia Rodrigo or Justin Bieber, look for what the music industry is missing, not what it already has. When Olivia Rodrigo debuted, the industry didn't have a Disney star sing about her love life for years. And when Justin Bieber debuted, he became the first teenage heartthrob born on the internet. Those are crazy something times. different, because BTS's level of artistry takes years to replicate. BTS did not have a huge debut in South Korea, but when they entered the Western music industry, they had already perfected for more than four years artistic elements that the Western music industry didn't see before. That's true. In other words, to find the next BTS, you need to stop trying to find the next BTS. But they're going on a hiatus. I mean, it should be an interesting two years. You may think that right now is the right time to create the next BTS, because BTS are not releasing music as a seven-member group for the next two years. But the fact that they are still planning to... I mean, if anything, the hiatus could probably help another big group, you know, rise. Maybe, you know, they're not going to be the next BTS, but I feel like it could definitely help some of the other popular groups in the industry. Releasing music as a seven member group for the next two years. But the fact that they are still planning to release a lot of music during this time is not a good sign to continue creating groups that resemble them. The yeah. Best street boy their, their hiatus isn't going to help small and new groups. It's it's probably only going to help the ones that are already big and have a, a big following. Boys took a four year hiatus and during this time, no other boy band could become as big or bigger than them. And BTS's level of performance and music, as well as worldwide popularity, is even bigger and harder to replicate than the one of the Backstreet Boys. This is how hard it will forever be to replicate BTS. Even if the BTS members release no music at all during this time or 
any other time in the future, that actually leaves K-pop a disadvantage in the Western music industry because all the hype around K-pop is born with an interest in BTS. K-pop's achievements in the West are not K-pop's achievements, they are BTS's achievements. So if BTS stops being BTS, K-pop will definitely be bigger than what they were before 2017, but they will go back to being a niche interest because the ones giving mm. K-pop the title of mainstream are BTS only. Without them, K-pop has no legendary records in the West. Yeah, it should be interesting what happens after BTS, because I got no clue. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe because of all the media play that exists trying to devalue BTS's popularity and art, but musical acts like BTS are once in a lifetime. We don't know if the next big thing is even going to be a group from South Korea or a boy band from the UK. By the way true. things are going on right now, there are more chances of having the next big legendary artist come from a Spanish speaking country, and there are way more chances for these legendary artists to be a soloist. But that. Oh, I hadn't thought about that, but yeah. Hey, those, those uh, Spanish artist spanish speaking artists they are huge should <laughs> only happen by promoting the Real artist huge. as their own authentic self and this is something that bts is doing right now while they release solo albums so it looks like the next bts is bts not only because their comeback in 2025 will be extremely hard to match but also it looks like all the k-pop categories in western award shows will go for bts members either way even in south korea j-hope the only bts member who has released a solo album until now already has six award nominations including including Song of the Year and Artist of the Year he's, against he's himself barely in one BTS. So stop members. trying to find the next BTS because number one, BTS is still here and number two, you're setting your groups up for failure. Music labels, K-pop fans and the media need to wake up and stop humiliating right. their groups like this. Let your performers become artists, let them be small so they can grow and let them grow organically because that was BTS's story and they did not become the next somebody, they became oh. the first BTS. That was pretty sweet. Exactly. See, even they know. Wow, that was a very well-made video, and I agree with well everything. Right? The reason the next BTS fails is because they're trying to be the next BTS. Like, you can't really replicate it. You're gonna have to do something new. Do something difference and it's not gonna be easy and it will take time seems like these people who are trying to replicate bts are impatient like they want results now and if it doesn't work out they just give up on it so the best thing for the industry to do is to forget about bts just don't even worry about them if they did something if they have a new achievement just don't let it affect them. They should just keep doing their thing. And if it's good, well, then people will notice. I mean, it's all luck. The people of uh, the companies know this. I mean, they create these groups. They train all these idols. They try their best because in the end, it's an investment. You can't guarantee, guarantee that it will work out. You just have to go along with it. If it works out, then good for you. If it doesn't, too bad. They already knew that it could have happened. But yeah, another reason people can't really replicate them is because they don't know what to replicate. Like, what exactly is it that made BTS so popular? I don't think anyone has a precise answer. They just did their thing, they practiced a lot, became really good at what they did, and people noticed. But even then, right? That doesn't really explain how they became so big worldwide, how they became so successful in Western media. It's just an interesting phenomenon. And of course, there was a lot of luck involved. You, you just can't do these things with pure hard work and skill, right? In life, luck is always involved. And that's just something you don't got too much control over. But yeah. I mean, on the bright side, because of BTS, it gave more attention to K-pop, which in turn helped out all the other groups. More people are interested in the music, the culture. Oh, in general, more people are interested in, in the country. So even if a lot of groups tried to be the next BTS and it didn't work out, you know, BTS at least probably helped them increase 
their numbers. So they actually indirectly help the whole industry, which gives me an interesting question, right? What's gonna happen when they're not here anymore? When they retire or separate or slow down their work? In the video, they said that K-pop will go back to being a niche thing, but I'm not so sure. It was like a whole bunch of people love K-pop. When BTS is gone, it could be that the interest in K-pop decreases or increases. You know, you just never know. They also talked about the hiatus, right? These next two years without BTS. The only ones who should get excited are the, the big groups right now because BTS was always like in the way of getting first place and all that. So without them, the people in second, third, fourth, fifth place, they got a chance. But yeah, good video. I enjoyed it. Had a lot of interesting points. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed too and thanks for watching.